Well, the number of available intensive care unit beds in the Southern California region continues to shrink. It has dropped almost two percentage points in a day to only 7.7% of ICU beds available. San Joaquin Valley is at 1.9%. The Bay Area and Northern California are the only two regions with remaining ICU capacity above 15%. However, the Bay Area chose to implement the new stay-at-home orders early this past weekend. You know, when we talk about a shortage of beds, what leaders often mean is basically there's a shortage of specialized support personnel, mainly critical care nurses needed to care for the sickest of patients. That's in part to the staggeringly high number of ICU patients, but also many smaller hospitals, which don't always provide the salary, support, or equipment as big city facilities, are now driving critical care nurses who already put their own health on the line to higher paying jobs. I spoke about all of this to Dave Johnson, a national health care consultant and author. So Dave, at least three counties in California now are out of ICU beds. And sometimes, yes, it's a physical lack of beds and support equipment, but really uh, very often it's a shortage of staff. I mean, fresh beds a lot of times are easier to come by than a fresh staff these days. The, the, the system in many communities seems to be challenged. Yeah, early on in the crisis, we really did believe it was physical assets. Remember ventilators, remember all the emergency hospital beds being constructed and so on. Uh, but what has turned out to be the critical resource are people, uh, respiratory therapists, critical care nurses, anybody that can do intensivist activities. And that's what the hospitals are scrambling to find particularly as we're seeing hospitalizations for COVID now consistently over 100,000 nationwide. As you well know, there have always been traveling nurses, but there seems to be a trend of some nurses in small, very often rural hospitals who really are not making much money and they're risking their own health um, to, to do this, this, this super important work. Right. Moving to bigger hospitals and, and, and bigger paychecks, can you talk more about the trend of what you're seeing nationwide and the overall effect sure. on the healthcare system that this pandemic is having, especially on some of the smaller rural hospitals? Well, it's, it's pure supply and demand, Mark. Um, so there are traveling nurses, agency nurses, uh, what have you. And right now, because there's such a shortage, uh, particularly in rural markets, the price can be as high as eight or $10,000 a week to bring one of these people in, which is literally five to six times what they would normally make in a full-time position. Now, it's hard to be a traveling nurse. I mean, you have to go to a new place, you have to learn the new systems and so on. Uh, so they certainly deserve a premium, but the market premium right now is extraordinary. Does that leave some small hospitals though, really, really scrambling to, to care for their community? Oh, absolutely. Um, small hospitals are, were already uh, struggling really to survive uh, before COVID. And when you, even with the additional relief that's come from the government, when you put these kinds of prices on you know, basic staffing needs, uh, it really you know, stretches the sustainability of, of these organizations. So mm -hmm. uh, we will see, uh, I think, some economic fallout from COVID based on this, uh, absent some other form of, of government intervention to provide uh, relief funding. And more on that, even before COVID hospitals, as you probably were aware, uh, were under enormous pressure to reduce care delivery costs. Well, COVID has increased that financial pressure. In response, enlightened health systems are now pursuing strategies such as outsourcing non-clinical jobs and doing more telemedicine visits to try and contain costs during the pandemic and will likely stretch beyond.